Hi and welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens and in this episode we're going to do an unboxing of Conflict of Heroes Storms of Steel Kursk 1943. This is the third edition, the latest printing. It's by game designers Uwe Eichert and Gunter Eichert and it's from Academy Games. So let's crack it open and see what you get inside. Hey, if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to give us a like and a share. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. One ringy dingy. So as usual with Academy, you've got the lovely historic artwork on the cover. Here you've got the, uh, the uh, this is obviously the uh, Germans and the Russians. And so you got a battle going on with some uh, Russian planes going against some German tanks and soldiers uh, perishing right before our eyes here. So um, let's just open it here. So we'll have to box a little. Off to the side here, just so we can go through the contents. So the first thing I see is you get the their newer style uh, trays. Um, if you've ever played the older older versions, you'll remember that they had the one big tray that covered the whole bottom. Now you've got the trays that you can set up. Uh, you can set up one tray for the Soviets, one tray for the Germans, and then one tray for the markers. So you, each player would get their own tray and make it easier to find their counters. So you get one, two and three of those two for counters uh two for uh armies and then your counters will go in this one and then like you see here the decks of cards and you got some uh, markers to delineate it's a good question what they're for because that was that's a new that's a new feature so uh you get some weapon cards and you get a deck of action cards All right, then you get the Storms of Steel mission book, which is basically the scenario scenario book. And this game comes with, let's see, 16 scenarios. And as usual, they have uh, your setup, which cards you use, which of the action cards are available to the players, which maps you're going to use, uh, and where to set up the counters, and any other rules. So this appears to be 40 page uh, mission book and most of the maps, uh, the, the missions are designed for, for two player minimum. Some are designed for up to four players, which is kind of cool if you want to play multiple, multiple players. Now you can play this solo pretty well, just out of the box. Um, you know, like any war game, playing both sides, uh, it's easy enough to play solo. Um, the solo system, however, does not specifically work with Storms of Steel. It is only so far for Awakening the Bear. Um, so, just something to consider. Um, we've got a nice warning on the bag. We don't want to let people, let kids play with this. Nice one to do that. So we have the round trackers, and there are four of them. You've got your mission round, excuse me, there's one of those, and then there's four command action. So in case for tracking your caps, if you want to play with four players. So there's four of those, made out of uh, pretty sturdy cardstock, coated. And then we've got advertisement for Storms of Seal. So there you go. If you buying Storms of Steel, you may want to buy Storms of Steel. So, uh, and there's some other of Academy's games in here as well. So, all right. And then we've got a reference card for terrain, fortifications, and obstacles, single sided. And then you've got another one here, also single sided. Um, again, probably could have printed these double sided. And giving you two or just giving you one and save a piece of cardstock but anyway got the uh overlays maps and overlays uh, terrain modifiers and the unit information uh your common actions combat resolution pre-round sequence and things you can use your caps for caps are bonus points that are given to each side each round and they can use them uh, to augment um 
the actions that they're taking. Um, one thing we didn't cover is this does have the they've now adopted the uh, here's the spent check die. So let's go through those real quick. With the solo system when it first came out, it came it, they they introduced the spent system instead of getting seven uh, action points per unit, and then if you uh, want to go to a different unit, you had to basically mark that unit as spent and go to a new unit. They came with a system where the AI and the player against the AI um, would determine if they were spent based on the action they took. So the more points you use, the more action points you use, the more the greater the risk that your unit would end up done for that round. And what they did was, uh, that, that was through a series of cards. Uh, the card that was drawn would tell you, it's like, well, if you use this many points, you're spent. If you didn't, you're still good. And that worked great. And, and one of us adopted it. And I think, I think they realized, you know, the light bulb moment when they realized that, hey, this is the better way to do this. So instead of issuing cards, which would have been a lot more costly, they came up with a, uh, a die probability for the spent check. And so that's what these 10-sided dice are. They're custom 10-sided die. And so you'll see it's, let's see, we got one, three, four, five, seven, and then one, two, three, five, six on the die. And so each side will have one of these and they roll and determine, you know, based on how many action points they, they got, the die will tell them if, they're, if the unit's spin or not. And it's, it's really just a, it's, it, I mean, it was, night and day because with the old uh the old system with the seven action points you'd you didn't you didn't take a unit spend their seven action points you took a unit and took an action and deducted from their seven action points so it's like i want to move one hex that's one action point well i move he moves i move he moves i move he moves it's like machine gun fire like you know very staccato very confusing and then sometimes it's like, well, but wait a minute, I want I want this guy to act, but I don't want to use this guy up. But this guy's like got a perfect shot at this guy. So then there was some strategy involved in it, but uh, but it just it it was just it when they came up with this, this was just perfect. So now you get it. It's a die based. I, I still prefer the card card based, but that's the new official. That's how you determine if your units are available to use each round, so uh, or or still still available to go. And it's you know dice or cards. It's still a much better system than it used to be. So and now we got the Storms of Steel, Curse nineteen forty three rule book. It is a forty pager, and it guides you from the beginning with an overview. Uh, it's full color, lots of nice graphics, uh, and it guides you through the rules of the game and. How to proceed and here it is the d10 spent check spent die is a weighted d10 values of two ones two two threes four two fives a six and a seven so a unit taking three action points has a 50 percent chance of becoming spent this means on average you'll be able to take two three action point actions before becoming spent this is the same number of actions as within using the original two two uh second edition rules but there are going to be times when a unit will just can keep doing stuff and there's gonna be times when he does one thing and he's out and that 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 chaos just really adds to the game so anyway uh moving on so you got your rule book tells you tips through all the different uh different rules for movement uh, zone of control combat line of sight so on and so forth it does have a very nice index at the back so you can look things up that you need to and that is pretty awesome. So there is your rule book. And then you're going to get a sheet of a set of maps. We'll open those in a minute. And then we get some silica gel. And we got sheets of counters. All right. And you get four sheets of counters. Oop, and they're like so ready to fall out. They're just punching themselves. So that's really nice. So they are nice. They they've made nice thick counters. They really do their games well. So these are really thick, really chunky, easy to pick up, easy to see on the board. Oh, I just want to play this right now. All right. So you get four sheets of counters. These are obviously markers. 
Some have fallen out already. And uh, I got various emplacements and some of them have already punched out other counters. So and the Russian forces right here. Got tanks, soldiers. And even more have fallen through. One thing that's nice about these is they are numbered sequentially. Um, and so you can sort them sequentially when they tell you, oh, I can't see them. Anyway, when they tell you what you need, um, the, you know, you can find them by number and that just makes it a whole lot easier to play. Looks like the graphics may have been updated since the uh, original version, uh, the second edition. They're very nice. Boy, is it just counters all over the place here. And they're punching again. So here's the German units. Kind of a gray green instead of your traditional flat gray, which is nice. We've got an airplane in here, Stuka. And then finally, some half sheets. They're not half sheets, you got some, some more vehicles here, but then you've also got your damage counter. So you've got uh, wounds to uh, infantry and then damage to vehicles. Uh, and so those are there as well. So you got nice four nice sheets of counters. And again, I'm just gonna try to punch these back in. They're just gonna punch back out. They come out so easily. All right, so four sheets of counters. Remember that. So now let's look at the game board. You get four, um, well, let's look at this. You get four map boards, and they are double width, they fold once. And these are numbered uh, to go in sequence with uh, Awakening the Bear. So those had one through six. This has seven, eight, nine, and ten. So they're single-sided, but then they fold once. And then you may use two, three, four, one map per scenario. But the, that beautiful, uh, that really beautiful artwork that they have on these, it's really, really nice. Just enough of a hex that you can see it, right? It's got center dots too, so you can line and do your line of sight tracking. And there's four of these. Some nice fields here. Big battles, tank battles. In some ways, it feels like you're actually looking at a, you know, a modern Google Earth satellite image or something because it's so, the resolution on it is so nice. So here's about 10. And finally, map 9. So we're in order. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. And you also get a sheet of punch-out overlays to alter the terrain even further. And these are double-sided. Got a hill. Got a, uh, looks like a trench. And so there's one, two, three, four, five, six overlays that punch out. So just to take the four boards and, and alter them just a little bit more. So you got a little town, a couple of hills, and a trench. So that's nice. So if you pick up a copy of Conflict of Heroes Storms of Steel 3rd Edition, you're going to get four sheets of counters that are very easy to punch, very nice. One sheet of terrain overlays, four folded map boards, a rule book, two player reference aids, the terrain chart, and the uh, uh, unit overview. You're going to get advertisement. You get four command action tracks and one mission round tracker with victory point. 
You're going to get the mission book with 12... Nope, 16 missions. 16 missions. You're going to get three of these awesome trays. Four dice. Two decks of cards. And three trays for organizing your counters. All in a lovely artwork box. And that is Conflict of Heroes, Storms of Steel, Curse 1943 from Academy Games. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye. Oh!